Hello and welcome back to my Plex testing and today we're going to look at the brand new QNAP 451D2. This now is knocking around for about 400 quid thereabouts. I know the price does fluctuate on these things wherever you are in the world but today we are doing the Plex media server test on this dual core NAS. It's got um, a dual core J4025 processor at 2 gigahertz and it's got 4 gig of memory inside. Now you guys have seen these videos before, you know how they run, so let's go straight into it. I've already got Plex loaded up, if we go into the server settings you'll see that I have already enabled the transcoding, I've got a Plex pass here and I'm using the transcoding engine and we are going to be using exactly the same files that we've been using before. And again, we're looking straight at those same files and we're utilizing this system um, locally via the network, as you can see, but that still means that we can still analyze transcoding of the system if we force it. So first files there, let's make sure everything's muted. We're gonna go straight into the matrix. We've done this test before. It is a 720p H.264 file, uh, quite a relatively low bit rate. Uh, and we can go ahead and just click play. Um, and again, you are going to hear my laptop fans kicking in from time to time. Uh, this is quite a high-performance laptop, but I am doing about four or five different things on this simultaneously, as well as playing back 4K. So the fans on the laptop may kick in at some point. So let's have a look. We can skip forward pretty quickly between the whole file. Watching it at 720 there, we are watching it over the network. So again, lovely quick performance there all the way through. Um, accidentally clicking pause there. So while that does that, we can now try and action some transcoding on this NAS. So at the moment we're playing it in the original quality. And again, this CPU, we've hit troubles before once we've done transcoding as Plex utilizes its own choice of driver rather than a default driver of graphics uh, embedded, uh, embedded graphics on this CPU. We are working on a fix for that for QNAP now. Since we've already done the Synology one. It's just a question of accessing the QNAP backend currently. But uh, we should still see good results if we go into, not that one, we want to go into 480p. We can see that 480, the file is seemingly still playing. We can skip forward and we're still getting some pretty good performance there all the way along. And again, now let's go even lower. We'll go down to 240p. This is where we're going to start to see problems. Obviously, the pixelization on screen is garbage because we've lowered the resolution so substantially. This is designed for such small screens right now that we're almost certainly not going to see any, um, anything viable on this big screen that we're recording on right now. And finally, going down to 160p. I will say so far, we have been able to skip forward and play back very easily. A 160p at 0.2 megabits per second, obviously, as those stats would indicate, the frames per second is going to be garbage, but we have done the transcoding. And I'm sure on screen there, you're able to see the resources being used. I can't see that, unfortunately. I'm recording that on a different screen, but hopefully the CPU and memory utilization should indicate how much work this system's going under there for you guys at home. So now we're going to make our way up to a 1080p file. We're going to go straight into Little Shop of Horrors. I know I say it every time, but my God, this is a good film. Um, it's a 1080p H.264 file. And without wasting any time, let's go straight into it. And again, in its original picture quality, we can skip forward. We can do anything we like in Plex Media Server on this NAS. We can skip forward. It's catching up beautifully. There's no caching or slowdown in the background. So that was the original quality there. So now we want to make our way down once again to those lower qualities. And this is where I believe we're going to see a little bit of bumps along the way. Plex, um, when it comes to this CPU, isn't going to be quite as responsive as you can see there. We are skipping forward quite large swathes. And if you have a look at the bottom of the screen, I hope that's clear for you guys. Um, hopefully this is encoded in 4K for you. Um, but if you can see, the buffering is far outpacing that of playback. And that's important. Because when we do these tests, a lot of the time it will do the job, it will change the file. But if the system can't transcode or decode, encode, whichever way you look at it, um, the file as it plays back and it isn't as quick as playback, it means you're not going to be able to watch the file. So now we're going to bring it down even lower. We're going to skip down to the 240s. And again... A little bit of work there in the background. Before I skip forward, we can see that the buffering there 
is or the uh, the transcoding uh, in the background is outpacing that of playback so that's a good sign if we were to try and utilize like a mobile device or you know limited data connection on a mobile device like in a train or something um, we can see that a transcoding is possible and now we're going to go down to the lowest possible one at 160p I'm going to carry on there and as we see ignore the pixelization that is because we are watching a file absolutely tiny recorded on uh, quite an impressive screen here we have on this recording machine um, but we can see there uh, once again at the bottom if you just look the dark orange behind the light orange it is buffering this absolutely fine there in the background so now let's make our way into those test files that we always look at there we always take a good look at the test files because these are the ones which are pretty much perfect examples of each of their format and one of the biggest hurdles this system always has and not so much this system I'll rephrase that NAS is that how this CPU is to do with H265 otherwise known as HEVC and HEVC 10-bit HDR these are ones where although they are the newer compression technique of 1080p 4k and greater um, there is slight licensing and support issues on a number of encoded systems which means that the processor either can't play it back or it has to use raw cpu power in order to do so and will often automatically transcode lower down so that's something we're going to see case in point this is a three megabit per second 1080p file as you see absolutely playing like a charm there in the background sorry accidentally paused it sorry about that guys had a delivery had to take care of it as you can see there in the background we are able to play back that file at its original format we can transcode it down to 480p and once again we are going to see issues and bumps along the way here we're seeing um the performance there took a little while but still the caching is absolutely fine there in the background and if we take it down to its lowest there but 160p we can see that it has transcoded that file fine. Currently, this system's doing a lot better than I thought it would. So now we do exactly the same file, same file density and size, but this time it's H.265 or HEVC. Now the first thing that will hit you when this file plays is it immediately transcodes it. Luckily, as you see here, it is doing an absolutely banging job. It has transcoded it, and if we go down, we can see that it's transcoded it to almost identical settings. If we transcode further to 480p, <clears throat> it still manages to do it with the cache and completed to the end. Lovely stuff. And once again, we'll go down to 160p, and it's playing that file absolutely fine. Great stuff, great stuff. So now we'll go into the 10-bit version of that file. We're going to go ahead and click play. And as we see, the caching, firing on ahead, firing on all cylinders, converting to maximum, great stuff. We'll go down to 480p again. System needs a little bit of a second to think. It's taken a little longer each time. Let's not be, you know, let's not ignore that. But it is still seemingly caching that file there in the background. Absolutely fine. And we're down to 160p now. And again, running absolutely fine at that lowest of the low resolutions. So now we're going to go into the tens, and again, I'm only going to test two of these each now. Straight away, we're going to go for the H.264s, and again, absolutely fine. The 10 megabit file, cached fine. Let's go, and this time we're going to go straight down to the lowest setting. We're not going to muck around with the middle ones, and absolutely fine. We could even skip between them. Lovely stuff. Next, we'll go into the 10 meg H.265. Get that open in the converter. And there you go. Lovely playback there, even on the straight conversion. And the 160p down there. So you'll see in the caching, but we are seeing things start to struggle the tiniest bit. So now we're going to go into the 30 megs section and the 30 megs H264. Oh, try and go back to that. 30 megs H264. And again, playing absolutely fine. We'll go down to the conversion, not the automatic conversion. We don't want that. We want convert to 160p. I may have confused the system there for a second. But as we see, 
it still did that conversion down lovely and low for us. We're going to do the same with the H.265, and then after that, we're going into the big gun files. As we can see, the caching there has happened. It's certainly taken longer than we've seen previously. And now we'll do the conversion down to the lowest once again. And again, this has been less successful. I think this is the first hurdle we've hit so far. It's a hell of a hurdle, it has to be said, but it's still the first hurdle we've hit. There was more of a kind of a thinking time there by the NAS. So now we go into the 100 files, the 100 megabits per second. We'll go for the H.264. And here is where we're going to start to see struggles. We see it hasn't leapt ahead in terms of caching in the background. And I do think it's going to outrun the playback, but not by a huge amount. It's only just going to win. So if we bring that back down there, so we've got a bit of time to play with. And now we're going to go for that transcoding down to 160p. And I do think this is where we're going to see strife. But it has seemingly cached that whole file beautifully. So next we'll go into the uh, 265 version, the HEVC, which is going to go into an automatic conversion. And this is generally what has broken most of the NASs that I've used in these Plex tests over the last few months. Um, H.265 at 100 megs is a killer. And we can see there, you've probably seen a spike on your side, but I do think we've hit a bit of a wall on this file. We can't even convert it down anymore. Uh, if we convert it down to 160p, we can see that the caching has got up to 8 and it has cached it. So... Generally, that original file format of H.265 at 100 megabits is just no good for that test. So now we move into 4K. So 4K, we're going to go through these. We'll go with the 4K H.264 file. Played at original quality. So it's 120 megabits per second, 4K, 2160p. And again, we're hitting that wall there. So why don't we go to original conversion or convert automatically even. We'll let Plex choose the recommended settings to try 4K on this system. We had a wait time there, we're up to three seconds, but even if this plays, it is going to be a struggle to stay ahead of playback. It probably will win, but if you were watching a 90 minute movie and tried to skip forward, I think we'd hit a problem here. But still, nevertheless, it has still done an effort of playing 4K at a Plex Media Server on this NAS. So now we're going to go for H.265 10-bit. We've only got a couple more left in the barrel to go through. And this is one that is going to push the system. This is a fairly modern 4K file, and it is converting it. It has converted it to uh, 120.1 megabits per second. It's had to obviously change the file format, but still nevertheless, UHD H.265 or HEVC 10-bit 4K 120 megabits per second media playing there, which is lovely to see. If we try and go for the conversion, have a look, give the system some time to think. I presume we're using quite a lot of system resources throughout this. I'm looking forward to seeing how this all panned out in post-production when I go through the editing, but it has edited that file. So now we've got the last two big guns to go through. We're going to go for um, H.264, 200 megabit. See, again, this is a monster of a file to play with here. And we're getting up to that number there when it gets to five, and then it kind of hits the wall the tiniest bit there. We're going to give it a few seconds and then uh, try to convert automatically. Let's go ahead, let it convert automatically, and that will just reshape that file the tiniest bit. But it's not the same as when we do that with H.265 files. Um, but let's let it see how it caches. We've got that block of three seconds there. We're up to five seconds. Are we going to get more? Yes, it looks like it is going to play back that file. So it now is going to play it back eventually, I think. But even if it does play, there's no way the caching can outpace the playback. So if we convert that down, no, it kicked us out completely. Let's try that again. This time we'll go down here to 
480p, which is still quite a big task to convert a 300 megabits per second 4K file into 1.5 megabit 480p, but seemingly it has done it. This has been a very, very interesting um, test here. We're going to go for the biggest one now. This is the nightmare file that we test on all of our NASs that generally is either unplayable or when it does play, it is played to a standard that's unwatchable. Now, after this, I am going to show you some of the settings that I set up on this NAS because QNAP have uncovered a few new things in their product lineup in terms of software that I do think Plex users and multimedia users want to know about. It does look like this file is going to kick us out. So if we make our way down to 480p and downscale this Herculean file down to UHD to 6, um, this will go down. This is a 4K UHD H265 10-bit, four, that 400 meg file. Are we going to see playback? And we have. This has been a very, very successful Plex test and very, very surprisingly high results for this NAS overall. Now, before we end this video, real quick, if I make my way into uh, the QNAP settings, I want you guys, if you do get a QNAP NAS in future, to just go to the App Center, go into Utilities. Is it Utilities we want? It's Entertainment. Go into Entertainment even. And what you need to download, make sure you download the Codex Packs. There's also the Cyan Media Sign Entertainment um, Center. This has got H.265 and HDR support in a number of ways. And there are other apps to go through too. But I do recommend downloading and installing a number of those apps. And we will be doing a dedicated Cyan or Cayenne video very, very soon. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'd say this has been one of the most successful Plex videos, particularly at this price point that we've done for a very long time. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Click like if you did. Click subscribe to learn more about this. And do visit the links in the description to the full review of this particular NAS, the TS451D2. And for more information on where to buy this NAS, visit the guys at span.com or use the links in the description to support this channel. I will see you next time.